Good evening, so tonight we're going to talk about Benford's Law. Well, not really Benford's Law, um, but more about how you can quickly develop a little interactive application with R to get some intuition about things that you might not know about. So I personally didn't really know about this law, uh, this Benford's Law, until there were these allegations that there was apparently some voter fraud going on in the US. So this video is not about voter fraud or anything like that because it's really not my uh, domain of expertise. I have nothing to add to, to that. There's many videos out there and, uh, you know, uh, little texts that you can read, blog posts, etc. that explain the situation very well. What I want to show you is how you can, if you, like in my situation, I didn't know really uh, anything about that, about this law, how you can develop a little application quite easily, quite quickly, just to get some intuition, do some simulations, and try to understand how certain things work. So that's what I did here. So what you see here is a, a shiny application that is actually, behind the scenes, a Flex dashboard. And a Flex dashboard is nothing more than a Markdown file. So this is already something that is very uh, nice, because a Markdown file is, as you know, quite easy to to write. I mean, it's just literally just one file. You don't need a, a server file, a UI file, you know, the traditional, uh, all, all the traditional files, the usual files that you need for a Shiny application. This is much easier. And it, I think it's probably the easiest way to develop such a little uh, app if you want to try some things out. So um, let's take a quick look at uh, what we're seeing here. So in red, these bars in red, that's Benford's Law. So what is Benford's Law? So I'll give you an example. Um, imagine that you are interested into the population of cities, right? You have a sample with, I don't know, let's say a thousand cities. For each city, you have its population, right? Now, imagine that for some reason you are interested into the distribution of the first digit of each population size, right? So for each city, you have a population, a certain amount of people living there, and you're interested into the f in, in the very first digit. If you have, um, I guess, large enough sample of cities, you will find that the digit number one, digit one, the one, will you will see it around 35, 30, 30, sorry, 30 percent of the time. Digit two, uh, around 17% and so on uh, until you reach, uh, I guess, less than 5% or something like that for 9. Um, what's important though, from my understanding, again, I didn't know so much. I think I had read about this law before, but I never really had the opportunity to play a little bit with it. Um, what's important is that the range of your cities, of the sizes, of the population sizes of your cities is wide enough. So if you only have very small cities or very big cities, but you know, nothing in between, if you only have big cities, like cities with, you know, millions of people there, or very small cities, very small towns uh, in Europe, for example, very small, um, you might probably not find this law. And the reason, well, I, get, I think the reason is that if you don't have a wide range, there are less I could say opportunities for these digits, lead digits to appear. So because it's a bit convoluted, a bit complicated, uh, I wanted to see, okay, what happens if I just, you know, simulate it, right? So actually this idea came to me from um, uh, Nassim Nicolas Taleb, who uh, tried and showed some screenshots that he quickly did some, some, some simulations, some draws in, I think it's Mathematica, is a program that he uses. And uh, I thought, hey, that's interesting. And I, I read his books and he always, you know, he always pushes this idea, which I think is very nice and very interesting that, you know, you have a computer, just simulate things, right? If you want to understand a phenomenon, just simulate it, see what happens. If you try some different distribution, some power laws is, is very much into these power laws. I think that's interesting. And so I want to do the same. So what I did is I, maybe I'll show you the source code now so you can see what I did was, was write this uh, Flex da dashboard, which as you see is very easy. It's 71 lines, very simple. 
uh, you start with a header. So this is literally copy pasted from the old geyser example, uh, old faithful eruptions you see on the screen from the uh, Flex dashboard website. Copy paste and I just put in there my code. So I, I created this Benford table, which is Benford's law. So you see number one, so the digit one appears in 30% of the times, two, 17, and so on. So you got eight, it's only 51%, uh, uh, sorry, five, 5%, etc. Then uh, I created the slider input, two slider inputs, one for the number of samples, so from one to uh, a lot, that's one million, and then uh, the standard deviation, one to 100, and I'll explain why in a bit. And then, yeah, and then I, I very, did something very simple, I just, you know, took my, my, my samples from a normal distribution, um, I transformed that as a table, and then I just took the positives, uh, positive observations, because why not? Um, then I had to transform the... Uh, so what I will get is each row will be one one random uh, sampling sample. So I'll have something like, uh, you know, 10, 11, then 1000, whatever. So I transform this into characters, and then using a regular expression, I uh, take the first digit and I leave it as a character. I, you see here, I commented these lines out where I transformed that as uh, I retransformed that back in, into numerics, but it's not really necessary. And then I I, uh, I computed the empirical distribution using uh, this uh, function from uh, the janitor package called tabil, which is basically like table, but it gives you the percents in a, in a table in a table format. Uh, I removed this column N, which just gives you the number of observations for each category, so I removed that. And I just gave it a name called empirical, so it's the empirical distribution. Benford here, up here, is Benford. And uh, I binded that with Benford, so with the uh, data frame here that I wrote up here. And then I, I do my ggplot. Very simple, so this is, if you remove, if you remove this, you know, this little you know these things here that are typical from uh, for our markdown files and uh, this uh, render plot etc these shiny things and these input dollars this is typical shiny stuff if you remove that that's just normal r code so that was literally my script before before i transformed that into uh, a flex dashboard so it's something very it's very nice because you can start with your script and then when it works and if you want to i actually the idea for me to do this flex dashboard was because I was always rerunning my script with different parameters, with different uh, standard deviations and uh, different samples. And I thought, okay, I'm getting tired of it. Why not just do this? And it took me like 10 minutes, no, maybe not even that. So it's very simple to do. Um, and yeah, and then you, you get this thing. So now let's try, let's try some, some stuff. So. I have a standard deviation of one. Uh, I think I don't remember. I think I yeah I kept the mean uh, to zero. So it's a uh, yeah the standard normal distribution mean zero standard deviation one. I have a hundred draws. So obviously here I have not. <laughs> so my empirical distribution in blue is not following Benford's law at all, and. Uh, you, you could think well maybe you know maybe it's because you only have a hundred samples. What if you know I have more, 48,000 already. Well, 48,000 doesn't really help more, right? What if I have a million? Well, still not meant for this law. And the reason is what I explained before is that because the range, you see, it's very narrow, right? I have a standard deviation of one, so my values are in a very narrow range. I don't have that many opportunities to for having, you know, ones and twos, etc. I don't really have that, right? So if we go back to here yeah, in the source code, I um, yeah, I, I, I don't have here, so I extract this first digit, right? And there's not many opportunities, right, to have um, to have something here that is that where I have you know ones and twos and, and things like that that can't really work, okay? Um, what could be also interesting is maybe I should we could perhaps see also the raw data. We could add a, a little table to see the raw data. I'm not going to do it now. Okay, so 
uh, what if yeah if we only have one sample of course uh, that's not too uh, interesting so let's go back to uh, a relatively low value so maybe a, sl a slider input is not such a good idea but okay let's try to yeah it's really not a good idea at all maybe if i just scroll no yeah maybe i should have used uh, something where you just type um, i don't uh, an input i don't know how, how they call it anyway let's try now increasing the standard deviation and see what happens so what if I go to two? Ah, it's not already interesting with three. At least I have some more variation here, right? I have some ones and I even have some nines. Let's increase a bit more. Four. Mm, interesting. Five, six, ten. And let's try very wide range, a hundred. So it's still not quite there right, yet, right? It's still not quite there, so, uh, well, obviously, if you wanted to see if these are statistically different, you should do a more um, rigorous test than simply looking at the distributions, but it doesn't seem to be quite there yet. So what if I increase the number of observations, right? Well, it doesn't seem to help, huh? It doesn't seem to help. So what if I reduce the standard deviation a little bit? Is there maybe a value, something that could be more uh yeah i mean it seems that for some values oh this one seems to be w working nice so obviously it's it's totally random so of course you will have some draws with 81 uh, standard deviation of 81 where here in this case seem to be work it seemed to have worked relatively well but then you you'll do another another draw uh, and you'll have something totally different so it's it's totally random but it does seem range seems to be more important than um than size of the of the samples so i should have not uh, i should have I, i'm trying to get to 28 just to see ah 28 you see 28 still doesn't 10, 28 samples doesn't seem to be too good but if i increase a little bit 4000 i'm already in some in a situation where where this seems to be quite nice so if i reduce the standard deviation that seems to be nice as well so let's go a bit lower yeah so this is already quite uh, different and of course one and two don't work three uh, starts to starts to be good but uh, so it seems right from this very so this again this is really to build intuition it's more for you know try to un get some understanding of how the mechanics work and it seems that this uh, range does seem to be uh, more important than um, than than the samples but uh, let me just do a little change instead of going to uh, 1 million because that is a bit ridiculous maybe let's go to a thousand let's try again yeah so there yeah, that's that's nicer so here we have standard deviation of one 500 samples a thousand samples really doesn't doesn't work standard deviation of nine already we see some interesting stuff at least we have all the digits um, and if i increase my observations it does seem to start to look interesting, right? It does seem to start to look like we are um, approaching Benford's law. Um, but not quite yet. Not not quite. Uh, I think if we increase a bit more, yeah, we're probably starting to get there. Now, also, I'm, I'm drawing from the normal distribution. So I wonder if uh, it could be that there are some distributions that might work better than than this one uh, i read that um if you apparently like the log normal distribution should work better now obviously i honestly have no idea uh of what that means exactly right i don't know if um yeah if 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 it really matters how much it matters um, I also tried with the uniform, actually I'm going to show you, I tried with the uniform distribution and something interesting happens. So let me, let me show you what happens if I, so with the uniform I need maybe to change, yeah actually no, I think I can keep it. 
I, I think I can keep it like this. Should should work. So instead of the standard deviation, now it's the it's the range. So I'll be drawing uh, random numbers from 100 to um, or from from one to maximum 100. So for, obviously it's not the standard deviation. So let's try out. So thousand. So obviously here I only draw once, right? But what if I draw? Yeah. So what you get here is the um, the first digit, the distribution of the first digit of uniformly distributed random numbers are also uniformly distributed. So I, I found that quite interesting. Um, it's not something that I was necessarily expecting, but when you th start thinking about it, uh, it it kind of at least for me it clicked that okay if they're all you know if they're all just as um, as probable if every number is just as probable then why should you have leading numbers that are different right i mean it's just everything's just equally probable so that's why it should um, it should work so it doesn't seem i mean a, a random normal or a random log normal doesn't seem to um, play a major role but what seems to play a major role is really this range this range seems to really really play a role even if i keep Hundred, uh, uh, one hundred draws. If I have a large range, this really seems to um, to be important. Uh, well, here I didn't even get any eight, so it's not so so good. But if I increase a bit more, you see, I'm I'm really approaching Benford's law. So uh, that that's it. So the idea here again is not to discuss anything related to the situation in politics right now just wanted to play a little bit with Benford's law because as I said I wasn't really familiar and still really am not but just want to play with it and I want to show you how I do stuff that's that's literally it it's just okay I, I like to I like to run these little experiments in general when it's really small things in general I, I really just do a script and maybe if I want to try different parameters I just build a grid and then I just map my function over this grid and then I, I just collect the results and take a look but uh, using a flex dashboard which as you see here it's literally 70 lines and it's very simple very very simple I, I'll post the source code as well on a, on a gist and gist gist I don't know and you'll just if you want you just can run that it runs locally and and yeah so um, that's how you can get that's how you can get some uh, some nice intuition and just play around with some simulations and uh, try to get some understanding about uh, different things. So hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah, see you next time.